Aye, Sarah Jane. Uh, politicians might want to pay attention to this story as well. Uh, learning to be resilient can make a huge difference to young people, uh, especially those who might be struggling with anxiety and low self-esteem. One of the most effective ways to teach it is, of course, through inspiration from others. And the Making Generation R campaign supports injured military veterans who tell their inspiring and often traumatic stories to school children across the UK. Two of those telling their stories are former army paramedic Neris Pierce and ex-soldier Justin Davis. Guys, lovely to see you. Um, Neris, can, can we start with you? Fact is, I think many people, when they look at the armed forces, would just naturally assume that you are the toughest of the tough, the most resilient people that there can be out there. But I know myself through personal experience and, and through people that I've interviewed over the years, you know, armed members of the armed forces can, can struggle as well. And, and that was the case with you. Yes. Um, so I got injured um, in the UK in a motorbike accident in 2008 um, and then had a really um, bad journey with lots and lots of NHS treatment, lots of things to try and fix my nerves and my legs. I ended up weighing 18 stone on 10 drugs, unable to put a sentence together, unable to live independently um, and felt worthless, like I, I didn't like uh, shouldn't exist, you know, that I was so much pressure on my family and so much hassle that I'd be better off dead. And finding a charity like Blesma, which um, pushes you to try new things, to find the new you, really like helped me out of that situation. Um, now I've been competing at Commonwealth Games, doing lots of sports. Did Invictus as well, I suspect. Did Invictus, I did, yes. Amazing experience, really, really phenomenal. Um, uh, Justin, t tell us about your story. I mean, you were uh, in the army and were in Afghanistan. So many people were, and, and that was where you were injured. Yeah, indeed. So back in 2011, December the 15th, I was serving with two rifles. Um, and our role for the day was a QRF patrol, which is a quick reaction force. And um, earlier in the day... You're just basically sent out. You get the call and you go on. Exactly. So, yeah, earlier in the day, we were, we were called out to a, to a, to a job and uh, one of our commanders had been injured in the morning. And then, as the day progressed, probably about an hour later, we were on our way to another job, which was um, a group of British soldiers that had been ambushed um, in our area of operation. And we had to bounce down to that. And on the way down to that, I was point man, so I was leading the patrol. Um, and it was my job to find any devices and, and provide safe passage for myself and everyone else behind me, um, whilst obviously observing for the enemy as well. And um, unfortunately, um, I stepped on and detonated a device with my right leg, and it just the right leg disappeared from there and the left was left hanging on by a couple of tendons, you know. So um, I'm, I'm just grateful that I'm here to be able to share my story now. How did you deal with that then when you found yourself in hospital? I mean, going from literally from the front line straight back to, to, to Birmingham, I presume. It's a real shock, yeah. a real shock, because you know what's happening on the ground. I was conscious at the time. But then when you, you're, you're, you're given medication and you're put to sleep and you arrive back in the UK, it's a complete shock, so you, you have no idea what's going on. So both of you have had these, the, these huge personal struggles and, and have displayed the resilience that you're now talking about with, with, with young people. Why, the, 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 why do you think that the young people are, are particularly right now in, in need of a little bit of help with this type of thing? I think people or young people have always been in need of it, but obviously with the social media pressures and everything else that they now face on top of schoolwork achieving their goals, there's a lot of pressure out there as well for work, for jobs, for university, what they should, shouldn't do. Um, and just teaching them some really helpful coping strategies that when they do face an adversity, they've got a positive way forwards. And we're always going to choose the unhelpful coping strategies first because they're easier. But if we can switch and teach them to switch to using the helpful ones, talking, using sports, getting a hobby, shutting off social media for a couple of hours a day, whatever it might be, then hopefully we can create a more resilient future. I mean, Justin, I mean, we, we constantly hear from some people about how these young people these days are snowflakes, which always puzzles me, given that it's young people that have been supplying our armed forces mm -hmm. with the rank and file for, for, for so many years. But there, there is clearly a little bit of a crisis in their, in their confidence. What is it about, you know, people like yourself who've come from the forces that, that can inspire young people in this way? Do you know what? I think, I think people can see a, a very visible injury, you know, whether someone's in a wheelchair or someone's got prosthetic legs, and they can see that. And when, when, we're, when we're in front of the children talking to them and hopefully inspiring them through our own adversities, 
they can see that you know maybe their life isn't quite as bad as as other people's. Um, it, for me, it's a it's a really powerful powerful thing. And just a last word. I mean, I, I I know again from personal experience just how dark it can be sometimes. That it, it is very difficult to see light. Uh, you know, at the end of the tunnel. For, for children who find themselves in those positions, I mean, how do you break through that barrier that they, that they must put up? Well, Making Generation R is about um, showing resilience and, and using inspiration of our stories. And Blesma, the Limus Veterans, and um, a social enterprise called The Drive Project came together to get this campaign of making young people more resilient. And they show our stories and the, way, the coping mechanisms that we've used. And maybe they can just grab hold of one coping mechanism that they can choose to move forwards to help their mental health, to make their issue known, you know, to have a voice. And hopefully that's what our campaign is doing. Uh, well, the campaign is uh, Blesma's Making Generation R. Neris, Justin, um, all credit to you and uh, hope it all goes well. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And that is your lot from Sunrise for today. Adam Bolton, of course, up next with All Out Politics. I suspect Brexit might just get a mention. We'll see you after this.